I'm back with Leela Sinha, the author of You're Not Too Much, the forthcoming book. And we're going to talk about intensives and expansives in interpersonal and romantic relationships. Because it really is a sort of a big thing. And uh, so, Leela, why don't you just start by giving people a quick recap of the, the framework? The framework. So the framework is basically a way to describe how intense you are. And there's a 10-point scale from 0 to 10. And the higher on the scale you are, the more intense you are. So at the 0 end, we have expansives. And at the 10 end, we have intensives. And the middle is where most people fall. There are a few people at the extremes. Um, but basically, it's, it's a 0 to 10 scale of, of how, how excited you get. <laughs> and so... If if somebody is an intensive and they're in a relationship with another intensive, that seems pretty natural. It can be. It often is. So first we have to dis define our terms. So when I talk about relationship, I, I usually use lowercase i relationship. What I mean is any two people relating to each other. So this could be a f two friends, a friend and, and uh, you know, a person and a colleague, a person and a boss. Um, so when two intensives relate to each other, they have very similar styles of seeing the world and operating in the world. And so it becomes really easy often, not always, for them to connect. Sometimes what you see is that they kind of butt heads. Um, but my experience anyway is that when I meet an intensive, if we butt heads, we butt heads for a while and then we slowly figure out how we mesh. And once we figure out that we mesh, we're inseparable. Um, when intensives meet expensives, that's a whole other story. So intensives, the way that intense, let me start here. The way that intensives make friends <laughs> is that we meet somebody and like everybody, there's a lot of research that shows that within the first like minute of knowing somebody, you really make a decision about whether or not you're interested in knowing them better. That's true, expansives, intensives, everybody. But once you've made that decision, what you do next depends heavily on whether you're an intensive or an expansive. So an intensive will decide that they like this person, they want to get to know them, they'll get to know them right away, they'll call them up, they'll email them, they'll have dinner, they'll have breakfast, they'll have lunch, they'll have dinner. Like They will just crawl into somebody else's life for like two weeks, and just two weeks. Because at the end of that two weeks, that getting to know you period is done. And once that getting to know you period is done, you can relax. Like So this is the same intensives have a work cycle that's work like hell, rest like you're dead, work like hell, rest like you're dead. And this is the parallel operation in friend making. It's get to know somebody really intensely. Okay, back off. And they might not call you for three weeks. But then the next time something really important or something big or something emotional or something reminds them of you, they'll call you right up and they'll say, oh my God, I can't believe this thing happened. And if you're an intensive, you'll pick up the phone and you'll say, oh my God, that's so amazing. I'm coming right over with casseroles, wine, and ice cream. And we're going to talk about it all night. Like that that response <laughs> is an intensive response. Expansives don't make friends like that. Expansives, they'll call you to text you, to make arrangements to have dinner. So like three weeks later, you have dinner <laughs> or lunch or maybe just coffee. And then there's this period of silence and then another meeting. And like, it takes two years to get to where intensives get after two months. There's nothing wrong with either method, but it's very different. So when intensives meet expansives, they think that the expansives don't like them because they don't engage in that deep way. And when expansives are making friends with intensives, they feel completely overwhelmed, swamped, like this person's way too much, and they like run away. So it takes some jockeying for intensives and expansives to connect. That's not to say we can't. There are a lot of really happy marriages. There are a lot of really great friendships that come out of that kind of union. So it, it's sort of, from what you said, it's sort of a surprise then that intensives and expansives can ever come together and make it work. Well, like I've said in some of the other conversations we've had, we need both. The world needs both. It's a really, it's a, it's a gap filling relationship. So if I'm friends with an expansive, 
I might have all the ideas all the time, go, go, go. And they'll be like, let's check out the details of how to plan that before we go racing off to do it. And I might feel a little impatient about it, but I like them. So I let them make plans mm -hmm. and they might feel a little intimidated by my impetuousness, but they like me. So they'll go research the thing that I'm interested in doing. Um, and then we have a great time together. Yeah. So would you suggest if you're an intensive looking to find a life partner, would you be looking for somebody who's intensive? That really depends on your tolerance level. So you can have a high tolerance or low tolerance person. A high tolerance person functions really easily and comfortably in the, their non-native environment. So a high tolerance intensive feels really comfortable in expansive environments. A high tolerance expansive feels really comfortable in intensive environments. Often that'll happen if you grow up in a family that's not your kind of, of intensity level, but that really loved and accepted you anyway. And just said, oh, well, you know, we're not like that, but that's the kid. Look at the kid go. Um, that kind of relaxed and loving environment um, can often lead somebody to really feel okay about being in an environment that doesn't match their personal style. So if you feel okay about somebody who doesn't match your style, it's going to be really easy for you to find your way into a relationship with an expansive or an intensive, with somebody who's not your match. And and develop a relationship system, habits that work for you. Um, if your tolerance is low, then it's a matter of how much you love the person because love is a thing, it's real, and it causes people to stretch themselves and grow in all kinds of fantastic ways that they don't grow otherwise. So if you're in a relationship and the other person, say, say you're an intensive and the other person's an expansive, and it drives you crazy how like slow and methodical and careful they are, but you love them. You absolutely love them to death and you can't imagine your life without them. Then you're going to spend a lot of time and energy figuring out how to be okay with who they are. Sure. Sure. And, um, it's about eight directions I want to go with this. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to pick up is you mentioned if you grew up in a family that was intensive or expansive, so families can be intensive or expansive separately from the members of the family? Yes. Yeah. So a family, the culture of a family, like the culture of, of a city, like the culture of a country can be expansive or intensive. I often use the British as the kind of classic expansive culture. Um, and say your stereotypical Italian or Jewish family as your classic intensive culture. So if you imagine a stereotypical New York Jewish family, you know, really loud and engaged and emotional and really loving, but in that really intense way, right? And then, and then you imagine somebody who's very calm and measured and never raises their voice being born into that family. They're going to, do one of two things. Either they're going to feel like they have to imitate that family style, that environment, in order to mesh and fit in and get their needs met, or the family is going to embrace them and be like, oh, she's the quiet, studious one. We don't really understand her, but we love her. And, and either one of those responses is adaptive. But when you have a kid who's, who grows up feeling like they're just wrong, 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 then then they start to feel afraid around the edges about it. Whereas if you have a kid who grows up feeling well-loved and like, yeah, you're not the same as us, oh well, you know, then, <laughs> then, then it's much easier for that child to, to adjust. So yeah, you have this, this environment, this, the culture of the family's interactions can either be intensive or expansive, and that can line up or not line up with any individual's behavior. In a family system, it's really typical for the number of people who are intensive to kind of correlate with the amount of intensiveness you find in the culture. Not always, but often. But in a, a larger system, the larger the system gets, the more likely it is that the system has a really independent identity and that that independent identity may not even be reflective of, of which, which cultural norm is in the majority. So you could have an intensive... A, a, an intensive institution that's still 70% expansive, mm -hmm. for example. Um, but the institution itself has this vibrancy and this intensity and this drive um, 
that keeps it intensive. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what advice might you have for somebody who is in a relationship with a person that's not of the same type they are and is finding that challenging? Love the pants off of them. Start there. Um, and really make room. I mean, I talk about this a lot from the intensive perspective in the book. If you're an intensive and your partner's an expansive and you are, say you're planning a trip, right? So you go in, you int the intensive, go into your expansive partner's office and say, I just had this great idea. Let's go to Norway for six weeks. And your expansive partner looks up from their accounting <laughs> and says, why are we going to Norway for six weeks? Because it'll be fun. Okay, honey, let me finish my accounting and get back to you. But I want to look, I looked up all these hotels right away. Right. So you have somebody who is already 89% in Norway. And then you have somebody who is not even traveling yet. <laughs> so the thing you do is you say instead honey I had this great idea let's go to Norway why are we going to Norway I'm just going to leave you with the thought of going to Norway I'll come back and talk to you about it in two weeks <laughs> and then you go off and you do your research and you get all inspired and you find like those funky igloos that you can look at the stars from or whatever it is like you find all the fun stuff that you want to do you continue to work on the project but you don't push your partner to catch up with you. They will catch up with you, they are processing. You have to understand that they are processing and leave space for it. So you have to keep yourself busy. You shouldn't just stop, because then you'll lose interest. But you also shouldn't drive them forward at a pace faster than what they can handle. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what about in the reverse situation? So now we're an expansive going to an intensive? Yeah. The expansive almost never starts things. <laughs> Oh, when the expansive has an idea, mm -hmm. the expansive sits down and has a thought and researches it. Right. And so let's suppose that the project is house buying. This is a good expansive project. It takes a long time, requires a lot of number crunching. So the expansive goes to the intensive and says, honey, let's buy a house. And the intensive says either. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. Or no, I love this house. I'm not moving. Right. <laughs> Right. And, and so the expansive has to sort of say, well, I'm really excited about it. And here's why. Share your excitement, share your vision. You may be, you know, going through everything in a nice metered way, but you need something to hook the intensive. Once the intensive is hooked, though, you got to be ready for the intensive to kind of take off with your project. So you have to also be willing to say, T -t time out. I don't know how much we can afford for this house yet. I'm crunching the numbers. Just start to think about houses, right? And expansive is going to do that anyway, because an expansive would want advance notice. But know that when the intensive actually gets on board, the intensive isn't going to need any notice. The intensive is going to be calling realtors tomorrow. <laughs> so be prepared. Like, do all of the research you need to do ahead of time, and then go to the partner and say, okay, so I've done a bunch of research, and it looks like we can afford a $500,000 house. Should we go house shopping? And then you're on the same page. You don't have to wait for the intensive to catch up. Now, if the intensive doesn't like the idea or you know the intensive is not going to like the idea, you better have your resources marshaled because they're going to have 8,000 reasons why they're right and you're wrong. So if people want to learn more about this, I mean, obviously the book's going to be coming out. The book is coming. Yeah, but if they want one-on-one -on -one help, this is they can contact you about coaching. Yes, absolutely. And you can help them with these sorts of yeah. uh, figuring out. Yeah. So my background includes a bunch of systems work and a bunch of um, interpersonal interaction kind of training in addition to formal coach training um, and the training I got in seminary. So, yeah, if somebody wants to talk about how do I tell my expansive spouse that this is this huge change that we need to make now, um, yeah, absolutely. Call me. We'll work it out. We'll figure it out. I tend to work in intense blocks. Uh, so two to three hours at a, at a shot, but that means that we'll get all the way through your thing in two to three hours. 
Yeah, that's great. And if people are interested and want to learn more about this, we will put the links on the screen for the website and to get in touch with you on Facebook or Twitter and uh, encourage people to reach out. You're, you're friendly Absolutely. and <laughs> like talking to people. Um, I do. I'm an introvert, but I love talking to people. So thank you for listening. And we will be back with more. So watch this space.